This video is sponsored by the amazing web platform Fiverr, who connects you with freelancers from all around the world to realize projects. Let it be cover artwork, let it be posters, let it be animations, let it be 3D design. Because of them, I'm able to show you my complete process of making an instant shoegaze guitar and how I got help on Fiverr to 3D design my ideas for this special instant shoegaze guitar. So let me share my process process of this unique guitar body. Hey everybody and welcome back to the Shoegazer channel where we talk about effect pedals, exciting music gear, home production and more. Talking about more. I guess it was about four years ago when I was in my living room I had an idea about a great shoegaze tone. I wanted to combine some reverb, delay, fuzz effects, some rhythmic stuff. Then I thought okay let's do that. So I got up, I looked for my pedals. When I finally connected all of it and wanted to record the idea, I totally forgot everything that I wanted to do. I was so busy to find all the effects and I was so excited about the sounds that I totally forgot to make the music. This happened not only once, it happened twice and the third time and the fourth time and at some point I was like, why is this so exhausting? I mean, when you play acoustic guitar, it's pretty clear that you just want to mess around with melodies and you want to sing over it maybe and you want to find interesting chord shapes. But you don't have anything else than just the strings. Of course, you could play some rhythms on the wood but in the end you couldn't do anything else, just play the guitar. But as a lover of shoegaze music, I wanted to have a similar situation when I'm thinking of a shoegaze song, when I want to create spheres and rhythmics and interesting layers. Most of you who are watching this channel will know how exhausting it can become to build a pedal board and to make everything work. It can take years until you find your sound, then you have your pedal board and then you start jamming. And maybe you jam for a week or for two weeks or for a month and then you have an idea of buying another pedal. And that's something that I have experienced during the past seven to eight years. So I thought, isn't it about time to change something? Then I needed to rest and I traveled a little bit and I was spending some time at the ocean and I had this sketchbook with me and I start scribbling. And I think this was the first idea that I had. I think uh, I imagined uh, having some sample pads to play beats and I think this should be a speaker and this should be a battery I guess so that you can play the guitar with a speaker and some sample pads and maybe loop anything. That's been the idea. I have no idea what I was thinking about there but I know that from this point on I couldn't stop thinking about this. From that point on I went crazy. There are also 3D designers on Fiverr who could possibly realize this guitar body. So if you're interested in realizing your own ideas, I can tell you so far I'm not a professional. I'm just a guy who tries to realize ideas. I realized several effect pedal ideas like the Ghidorah Fuzz, the Psycho Candy Super Fuzz, the Ultra Blast, which is currently somewhere in the practice room or on the pedal board of Scott Cortes because I sent this pedal to him. And also the Katzenyama Filter Fuzz, which I produced together with Summit Amplification, the second version we released this year. Everything that I can give you is how I think and maybe I can inspire you if you want to try out Fiverr for yourself to realize any project you don't have the abilities for to make it by yourself. You can use my promo code TrueGaze24 and get 10% off your first fiber order and yeah so let's go so after this draft I had the idea to put the sample pads on the edges of the guitar so I could play like this you know I already implemented an Archi MPX 8 together with guitar dock here in Berlin into my first Jaguar shaped guitar so we made a whole new body for that just to implement the 8 pad sample player from experience I know that it feels very hard to play on one side all the time <laughs> So 
I wanted to have the ability to play with both hands on this part and on this part of the guitar so that it would feel like a percussion instrument. So this is why I had the idea to put four sample pads near the neck and four sample pads below the whammy bar where the outputs would be. I also thought of, hey, why not making it in stereo so another speaker could maybe also be implemented in the head of the neck where the guitar mechanics are. We would also need a resonance body for that that would actually sound good but then I thought maybe this is kind of trashy maybe the guitar would become too heavy I had no idea how I would put the cables through the neck but then I thought of hmm, why not making a whole software for that that you would be able to program your samples that you would need on a smartphone you would maybe also have a little LED screen on the top of the guitars when you're looking down this was all four years ago similar guitars exist now which is kind of crazy they wouldn't look like this not as fully stuffed with knobs and pads like I did I introduced one of these last year, the Next G guitar, which you can add effects on, which has an onboard speaker and a looper and stuff like that. It's nice, it's very lightweight and looks quite cool in my opinion, but it's based on an acoustic guitar and I don't think that the speaker sounds very good. And I also come to the decision that programming something with your smartphone isn't something that I'm interested in because I actually want to get rid of smartphones and desktops while I'm in the creative process. I just want to be far away from it. Nothing you can get a message on or you could check out Instagram or whatever. I just want an instrument. In the end, I just pushed the ideas that were possible for me to realize. Another idea was to also integrate lights and LEDs around the body and in the neck. I have a friend who is totally into planetary cymatic frequencies. That basically means a sound that you hear can also represent a circling time of a planet or light, so it could also represent color. I was thinking of, oh, wouldn't it be cool to play a note and then you see your guitar lightening up in a color that this note is representing. Maybe it makes you more creative to see colors right in the moment of playing music. I still think it's a cool idea, but then I realized the guitar would get quite hot and it would also need a lot of software design that I'm not able to do. So I never thought about it again. Here you can also see there's also a speaker and I decided to go mono here just with a bigger speaker. And from that point on I was like okay it's nice to think about it but let's try to make a model. So I bought some pieces of form and plywood bars, parcel tape and a cutter. I just tried to make something out of it. I got help from my friend Johannes Marx who is also so making workshops on prototyping and stuff like that. He's a little genius. Also helped many bands to realize DIY projects. So he gave me this little teensy board and connected it to some copper plates and also programmed in MIDI language what every copper plate would do so I could actually control samples on my computer just to experience how it would feel to play them. And I also used some very old USB speakers just to get an impression of what such a guitar would feel like. But the more I looked at the shape I thought no, this looks so alien and it looks more like an insect or an elephant or something like that. That's not a guitar I would feel inspired to play. And then I remembered how Look Mom No Computer played this Casio EG5 guitar with an onboard cassette player from the 80s. That was the size of a Telecaster guitar. It looked very handy and cool and futuristic and in some way very inspiring. I was like wow this one has also an onboard speaker and I wanted to have something that has the feeling of this guitar. I just took the shape and I tried to get rid of everything that I wouldn't need so there's no cassette player anymore. And then I tried to imagine how would it be to connect headphones to it and maybe a little beat machine. And then I remembered this Teenage Engineering PO12. I had to get that thing at around 100 bucks or something like that, but used it is much cheaper and it's so small, you could do so many things with it. So you can get very creative with it and I thought why not putting this into a guitar, it would be so amazing to have beats while playing and to noodle around with 
crazy distorted beats whatever instead of the cassette player let's put in this teenage engineering po12 rhythm machine on the upper edge of the guitar i imagined having a zoom ms50g multi effects pedal these effects are very small and have lots of effects so it would be amazing to run the guitar into these effects while playing a beat and on the output you would just hear the mixture out of effects influenced guitar playing and beats. To see if this would be possible I had to get rid of all the electronics on this effect pedal and see if I could make it happen. And there's also a little looper. I really like the German Solo XT looper because I like Digitech in general but this one you can pre-program with BPM time. So you could sync it without cables if you want so. So I can type in here 80 BPM and here 80 BPM so I could loop and be always in time. That would be so cool. Playing shoegaze looping your spheres and playing beats at the same time while you hear everything. That would be cool, I thought. I would have to make it out of plastic probably, because otherwise with all the stuff that's inside it could be very heavy, so maybe 3D printing is the best option, but I don't have any idea how to do that. But I looked up the Casio EG5 on the internet if I could find any model or any photo where someone took out the screws and opened it up to have a look inside it. So then I found this where you can see all the PCB boards. You could see that in the center of the guitar is a very massive part to keep the guitar stable when you put on the strings. It's probably made of metal or aluminium or something like that. And then you can also see the speaker. So I thought, well, someone has done it in the 80s, so why not doing it today? Then I used a Telecaster shaped nylon guitar by James Nelligan and used a thick paper board to create a similar shape to experiment with the rhythm machine and also with sample pads. And I quickly realized that I would get rid of the sample pad thing because I didn't want to use any MIDI stuff. I needed the space for the effects. Then I typed in 3D printed guitars on the internet and the whole world of 3D printing opened up. I'm still just hitting the rim of all these topics because there are so many different aspects that I had to do in advance before I could care for 3D designing and it's just a lot for me. Then I found Frank Piesig from Bremen here in Germany who has created an electrocaster, a modular guitar that can play arpeggiator shapes because it has implemented little robotic arms that can trigger the strings. He made it out of plywood as far as I know and he used the sandwich method meaning there's a top plate, a middle part and the bottom plate to put together the guitar. And the middle part, you can use it as a modular part to put in something like a pickup, something like these little robotic arms. And this was very inspiring. This guy is crazy. I liked it. I liked it a lot. He also made the complete neck himself um, with little tiny lightning LEDs. I mean, look at this, what's going on? He even managed to create a guitar neck that can act as a beat machine. So he could even program every single fret position. Let's say this one, this one, this one, this one to be a hi-hat. And these fret positions could be bass drums and these could be snares. And then he hits play and you can see how a beat machine is running on his neck. He 3D printed and concepted all this as far as I know on his own. He also tunes his guitar visually on his neck fretboard because it's lightening up all the time he tunes so he can experiment with different guitar tunings. But I'm not there yet. I think you know. All right, let's go. I have to check out the electronics first and if everything that I imagine works. And then I uploaded my first idea of all the electronic parts and run a first demo. Then I just loaded a picture of a guitar shape that I had where I've put all the different elements on. Took a very transparent piece of paper, laid it over the screen and then I just draw around it to get an impression of how the shape could look like in the end. 
and I came up with this. Here you can see the speaker is now next to the guitar neck. Of course I could hear it a little better while I'm playing. And I also thought when I put the drum machine here, I could reach it very easily while playing. So I could hit play. And I also thought, wouldn't it be cool to have the looping button right next to it, so when I'm playing, I could just use one finger and loop. This is why I decided to go for these positions. So here you can see the looper button and the drum module and also the headphones output and a stereo output if I want to play this on a PA or something like that. Then I realized this is a very complex form and you have to make lots of holes to reach all these different buttons. So I asked my best friend Kurt Voorhees, who is a professional 3D designer and asked him if he could make me a little cover for this beat machine. So he made this for me and he printed this very very beautiful protection shield for my drum machine so I could lay it onto it and could just screw it on top of the guitar. There are little lights next to the buttons so I wanted to have transparent buttons where I can see all the different symbols for the kick and the snare and the play button. So this way I could get a feel of how it would look like um, if I had a beat machine on my guitar. I also needed a mixer. The only mixer I had to put together two signals, beat and guitar, was much too big. So I needed to find a solution to get electronics for a mini mixer that works only for this purpose of mixing two signals. A headphone signal, a stereo signal that goes out to a PA for example. The other aux out had to go to the speaker, a Sony SRS-XB10. This one is very thick in the basses. It's not too heavy, it's heavy enough to get a good sound, I guess. So I asked my friend Luca of Summit Amplifications if he could make me a mixing unit. And this is how it looks like. I wanted to run it on battery, so I remembered the PS5 battery-based power supply by Jojo for effect pedals. It has seven outputs. I could definitely run it with two MS50Gs. It has also a five-volt USB output that I could run the beat machine with and enough milliampers to run three effect pedals, one mixer and a speaker with it. I also integrated a high-cut filter that allowed me to make interesting breaks, for example. So this is how the mixer unit arrived. This is what Luca made for me. He used also a thick piece of paper and screwed everything onto it so I could integrate it into the guitar. And that was super helpful for this project. Then I asked my friend Anthony of Guitar Dog how we could realize this body and he told me I had to make little templates of every unit. So for the mixer, for the looper, for the different electronics of the MS50G, for the power. I took apart all my effect pedals and took out the PCB boards, laid them on top of a piece of paper and just draw around of it. So that was the genius part of that. Now I'm sitting here with all the different electronic parts and I hope to integrate them one day into a guitar body. But where does that come from? Yeah, I have to print it. That's why we're here. A wooden guitar would be too heavy. It would be so heavy in the end, nobody would like to play it. So here was the first process of finding the positions of all the elements. Now we have two MS50Gs, one for the beat machine as well, because I decided I wanted to have reverb and delays and distortion on the beats as well to mess around with that. Then I laid everything on another piece of paper, draw a shape around that and cut it out. Here you can see the first plan for the shape of the guitar. Why not doing the same thing as Luca did and put all the electronics into that paper shape? And this is what I did here. So that was the very first time where I could really feel how this guitar could look like in the end. And yeah, then I just laid the guitar neck onto it and tried to get an impression how it would look like if I turn it on. Imagine if this would be real, I thought. So here's the second demo.
come back to our sponsor Fiverr, I started my process of finding a freelancer on Fiverr. So I went to the page, typed in PCB enclosure because it was the closest thing that I could think of because actually it's a PCB enclosure just in the shape of a guitar. So I typed in PCB enclosure and looked for the best Fiverr seller that I could find. This one is called Emera. He had 50 jobs already. He collected very good feedback and is top rated so I thought let's do it. The good thing about Fiverr is that most of the people there um, have very affordable prices which is very nice if you try to work on the prototype like I do. So I thought his 3D designs of PCB enclosures looked very decent and I could imagine that he would be able to realize the guitar shape as well. So I tried to find all the information about him. A member since 2017. He speaks English, German as well. Wow, I didn't speak German with him. Why didn't I do that? And he also explains who he is and what he can do for you. He can convert data into a 3D model. So Let's try that. I should contact him first. I looked what I needed. Create mid-complexity PCB enclosure. With this package you will get two or more sides of the enclosure. Premium would be create high detailed PCB enclosure. Okay, this was very pricey. My budget was like around 500 euros, 500 dollars, something like that. You don't want to spend more for a guitar project, I think because this is already very expensive if you consider all the effect pedals that I want to integrate into that. It's not counted in all the materials I need to make the first prototype and the time for developing that thing. Just saying. All right, so I contacted him and he said, I'm ready to take this project as you are going to give me all the dimensions for all the parts. Do you have step files for the inner electronics? I have no idea what step files are, so I said no, I don't have step files, but I can give you all the proportions. So I explained my complete plan to him. As I couldn't give him step files to realize this guitar body, I told him that I could give him photos of the electronics and the specific dimensions so he could work. And he said, yes, I can work with that and we may have some iterations. So I said, all right, I will first finish the measurements and prepare all the files and come back to you once I'm ready. Thank you. And he was like, okay, great. So that was the part when I realized, oh man, he has no idea how this guitar shape should look like. It would be very complicated to communicate that. So I had to design a guitar shape in a vector program like Inkscape with all the measurements. And as I'm doing all the measurements of the parts myself, why not making the whole vector design in advance and send him the picture in the end and he would just make my 2D image into 3D. That was the idea. Three weeks in a row I sat there trying to figure out the vector designing program and I'll show you what I did. So first, as I based most of my measurements on my Jaguar shape, um, I looked up professional drawings of the guitar from the outside and from the inside where all the holes and deeper shapes are of the guitar to put in the electronics. I also compared Jazzmaster and Jaguar shapes just for the dimensions but in the end it didn't really matter what kind of shape I take. I will have to resize it in the end anyways. So I loaded in a photo of the Jaguar shape just with one single coil because I wouldn't need two in that case. I just needed one that I use the most and this is my next single coil. The position where the whammy bar lies because I would like to bend and also the position for the bridge and the neck. Then I measured my paper prototype 345 millimeters wide and 480 millimeters high. I also integrated the photo and with a little bit of transparency I could see where my prototype shape would align with the Jaguar shape. So I needed to resize everything a little bit because a photo is never accurate. You have to find the closest realistic dimensions that you could get. So I tried to measure and measure and measure and in the end I came up with this. So here you can also see some photos of the different elements like the power bank, the beat machine and the speaker. And I I also made all the holes based on my prototype where they should lie in the end. So all the holes for the screws and all the buttons and stuff. So then I tried to get an imagination of how it would look like if you would put on the whammy bar mechanics and also the pickup and the bridge.
storage and the electronics of the looper and the ms50g and measuring and measuring and measuring i understood this is how the shape would look like i have a centerpiece here which allows strength it has to be massive this is the light violet part here i also have the pcb boards of the mixer and of all the different effect pedals and i slowly but surely felt quite happy with the result also you see these four red lines these are the cable lengths of the power cables when i'm connecting them to the power supply they shouldn't be in the way it's very dangerous here it's not perfect at the moment i also had to see if the screw part of my beat machine would be fitting and then i decided come on it would take away so much space to screw it on top of this plate why not integrating this little cover it wasn't for nothing in the end because i could test with this a lot yeah but i decided i had to implement it and also make the shape a little bit wider on the edge so then i had to find positions for the output holes then i asked my friend anthony of guitar dog where do i have to put the bridge so the guitar is in tune in the end so i put the bridge exactly where he said and then i remembered when you look at the pickup plate all the electronics are attached to the pickup plate and i created a second layer of the top plate for a pickup guard where all the electronics are attached to and here you can now also see the free spaces for the beat machine and for the looper knob slowly but surely i got an idea how this guitar shape could look like so i had a middle part like this guitar here and a top plate and a bottom plate when I was finished with my vector design, I exported all the different layers for Amara. And here I had five different PNG files as a vector design. I was very proud of myself for the bottom plate, for the middle part, for the pickguard and for the top plate. I uploaded it to send it to Amara with the instructions I also made on Photoshop. All the depths for the holes and stuff like that because I could only work in 2D. I said, sorry, it took me so long to prepare these files. This has been the first time I made technical vector files. I hope the way I made these works for you. And he said, it is very good. And yes, SVG would be great. Do you have the body dimensions? I also wrote him the body dimensions. I gave my best to design everything in scale. But I'm sure I made many mistakes, but we will see after the designs. I also asked him if he could not round up the guitar body corners so it would look more like a guitar body. And he said, yeah, you can do that. And then he sent me an offer, which was slightly more than 500 euros. But I was totally fine with that because I had so many different requirement re requirements. And he said 20 days of delivery, which I think is okay, considering that this project is quite unique and complicated. So I confirmed this offer. Fiverr asked me, your purchase was confirmed. Next, fill in some infos, get your order started. Amara will need this info before you can start working on your order. If you're ordering for a business, what's your industry? So I typed in online media and streaming because that's what I do here. It's on YouTube. Is this order part of a bigger project you're working on? And of course it is. The idea is a futuristic guitar performance in the end. They also asked me to put in the design requirements in terms of pictures, images, freehand sketches, photos. And I just wrote already provided via chat. I sent that and my order is now in the works. I'm super excited about that, man. That is the first time I felt professional during years of making this instant shoegaze guitar. 20 days later, I thought, wow, if you remember how I started the whole thing, drafting any ideas in my sketchbook, that was pretty amazing. There were just tiny things that he needed some guidance with. For example, that the middle part looked very filled and there's no space. So I asked him if he could do this as well. He thought the power bank should be open, but it shouldn't be open. So this is why he kept this part gray. I sent him a little draft where the mistakes were. Then he finished the delivery and then it's your delivery is here. View the delivery to make sure you have exactly what you need. Let Emera know your thoughts. So here it is. He has sent me all the STL files, which are 3D printing files, I guess, and also a step file of the whole body put together. And here you can see how the back plate looks like, how the cover plate looks like for the battery. Actually, it's not a real battery cover. It's just to reach cables on the power supply that I could take off, for example, to save battery if I don't want to use the effects for the drums, for example. And here's the middle part. I think it looks amazing. 
I can definitely imagine how this would look like in the end. Everything looked just great. So I was super happy with this. Everything looked just like I imagined it. So I approved the final delivery, finished that project and was very happy. I gave him a very good feedback and wrote him a public review. I also tipped him. 50 euros because I think work was outstanding considering that this would be much more expensive if you wouldn't use fiber I thought he would deserve it he did a very good job and uh, I'm very happy with that in the end I still needed another revision because I remembered oh my god I forgot to add the holes where the cables run through inside the body and the holes where I connect the audio cable and stuff like that I forgot about all of it because I'm a total newbie to this But Emira was so cool, he did all these jobs after we finished the project and this is very cool. All in all, I have to say, I got so much from this whole experience on Fiverr, it's just super valuable. And I have to disappoint you here. I know you want to see how this guitar is printed now, but I think I have to do this in another video. Everything I can give you right now is this here, the pickguard plate. Because that was easier to print, it was a very quick thing to realize. It looks very good. I used PETG material. Although it's very thin, it's very stable. I hope it's heat resistant as well. But as you can see, I made my first mistake. So the buttons do not fit through the holes because I have no idea how to create decent vector files. I did all of this for the first time, but it looks like the effect of the zoom, for example, will fit here. And it also looks like the hole for the bridge is a little bit too wide because of my measurement. I did many things wrong here, but in one of my next videos, I will show you how I ordered the corrected 3D parts and how the guitar sounds in the end. This is how I developed my own vision of a guitar. Considering that this is a quite complicated thing to do, I got quite far and I'm very excited to finish this project at some point. This is how far I got and I thank you for watching this video. Thanks to Fiverr for sponsoring this video. This is one of my hard projects. If you want to check out Fiverr for your own project as well, use my promo code TRUEGAZE24 to get 10% off your first Fiverr purchase. Realize your next album cover artwork, posters, 3D designs, music videos, animation. You can do everything on Fiverr. So thanks for watching. I hope I see you next time and see you later.